what should we write? I don't know. That's... It's a big question with a small board. I'm into it. It's kind of whimsical. Um, I don't know. I mean, do we want to... What's your, what's your motto? Like, if do you have something that you... Like, I always say do? embrace your weird. Let's do that then. I'm a, I'm a living example of that, I like to say. Embrace... Oh, this is not gonna fit. You're, you're doing great. I had a tiger. You're almost there. Yes. Love it. Sorry, I have to do a hard. No, it's, okay. it's just me. Respect. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Hi, everybody. So we are here today, me and Matt, um, in a very peculiar place, in a very awkward chair. <laughs> Um, inside Facebook HQ, um, we've actually just done an Instagram live on the Seventeen Magazine's Instagram yep. about NIDA, about National Eating Disorder Awareness Week. Um, it was really special. We both talked about kind of our experiences, how you can be more involved in the body positive community, and I've had the pleasure of meeting this man on Sunday in Minnesota <laughs> at the Mall of America, very random, yeah. for the NIDA walk. And uh, I really, really am glad that we're here together and we're doing this YouTube video so that you can hear his story. Because um, as someone who's in the body positive community, I get frustrated at times that I'm white, blonde, blue eyed and I have an hourglass figure because I want to see more diversity than that. And I want to see people, I want to see men especially talking about body image. Um, and so I really just want to pick your brain today and just get everything this magical, because your words when you talk, like, <laughs> I'm just like, ah. Uh, I want, what would you say to people out there who are struggling with body image? Um, well, that, that's a, it's a big, big it's a kind of a cold yeah. open, yeah. yeah but I, I think that um, <laughs> I think the most important, like if I only had one sentence for every person to hear, yeah. um, it would be, "Don't worry, you're not alone," um, because that was a message that I actually received a lot when my life first started blowing up and going crazy. Um, to kind of give a, a shortened Cliff Notes version of my story. Um, yeah, let's do that. We should have probably started with that. Ah, so it's, rewind. It, it's totally cool. I, um, when I was 16 years old, I was 497 pounds. Um, there were a lot of factors leading to that. I had my own personal experiences with binge eating and I had some digestive issues. But when I was 16 years old, I was nearly 500 pounds. Uh, over, this back, over the span of a few years, um, I lost over half my original weight and uh, after that I was stuck with a lot of extra skin that made me incredibly self-conscious um, especially once I started getting compliments from people on how great I looked when I was wearing clothes I grew more and more terrified of what people would think if they saw me without me. Yeah. Um, this is something I haven't really talked about a lot yeah. in in, uh, in different like interviews and stuff like that but uh, a week before I made this video that ended up going viral, um, I went with, I went on a first date and I ended up going to the woman's house and when she saw me with my shirt off, she kicked me out of her apartment uh, because she didn't like how I looked. I, it, it was years ago, but uh, but that really instilled this like, it just hammered in this fear I had of people seeing what I looked like. And uh, one day, randomly, I got a message on Tumblr back when I had like 300 followers asking if I had any extra skin from losing weight because they were dealing with that. Yeah. And at that moment, I was like, well, this is someone reaching out uh, who wants to be told they're not alone and I can't just ignore this message. So uh, very tentatively, I uploaded a video where I showed my body to the people who were following me. And in the span of a day, it was ripped from Tumblr onto YouTube and Facebook. It was posted on Cosmo, BuzzFeed, Upworthy, and uh, to this day, <laughs> my people, uh, which just means like the one contact I have that, that helps me out with my interviews and stuff, uh, she told me that it, she's seen counts of it being viewed as many as 120 million times. Wow. And it'll be two years this video was posted in about a week and a half. Um, so since that since that like moment um i had this experience where i just wanted to use whatever platform i was given uh however small or however much it grows to tell people that they are so important and beautiful in their own skin and that no one deserves to feel afraid or nervous just because they are who they are yeah exactly and one thing that we touched on and i heard you saying earlier was um how it was so beautiful. You were like, when I lost all the weight as well, I felt like I was in a brand new house. Yeah. This body was a brand new house. 
And that can be so, um, so relative to so many people who go through changes because we do, we're constantly changing. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but how did you deal with that? Like, how did you make that house your home? It's been a, it's been a really strange experience um, because I'm reaching a point now where over the last four or five years, every time I finally start to get comfortable in my body, there's been some kind of drastic change that just shook everything up again. Um, so I was, you know, I was losing weight and once I started to really like how I looked, I realized that this extra skin was coming in and I hit that away. Um, and then this video goes viral and over the span of a year I start to grow comfortable in that body and I feel like I don't have to hide myself anymore. I go to the beach and for, for the first time in five years I take my shirt off in public. Um, and then uh, in February of 2016, I undergo the first of two procedures to cut off 60 pounds of skin from my upper body. I'm left with these two giant scars uh, on my torso. I have no feeling for most of my upper body and I'm completely like uncomfortable and stiff all over again. And um, try as I might, especially when you're someone who's viewed as like a symbol in the body positive community, when you wake up and your body's completely different, it's an, it's an adjustment. It was a really, really difficult uh, first couple of months. Um, and it's still, it's still like, the weird thing about insecurity is, and I'm sure you've, because everyone's experienced this, insecurity has this incredible ability to grow and adapt to whatever circumstances you're in. So even as you start to grow more and more comfortable in your own skin, it just kind of changes forms. So here I am, like, in this new body, and I, I feel happy about it because I've, I've wanted this for a long time. But I'm looking in the mirror and I'm seeing the scars, and they're, they're turning, like, bright red, and all I can hear in the back of my mind is, like, the fact that my body was damage control. It doesn't look like, even now when I'm shirtless and it's been over a year since the first surgery, it doesn't look like a, a normal person's body. It, uh, it looks like something that's been like surgically altered. It'll ne I'll never be in a position where I'll take my shirt off and no one will know that I've had that surgery. Um, and so there are days when I see myself and all I can think is, this is the best of a bad situation. Um, but little by little, I've found these things that make me feel strong and make me feel like me and make me feel independent. But I think that all comes from realizing what the like what the things that you value most are, what the things that make you feel most beautiful. And sometimes they're cosmetic, and sometimes they're not. Um, coming to over the last year, I've come to terms a lot with my own like femininity, uh, my love of flowers, um, bright colors, nail polish, the the effort that I put into being myself. Um, makes me feel strong and it makes me feel like me yeah. but the biggest thing that happened that really made me feel comfortable in my body was um, November of uh, last year and I can I can show you to this if you guys want but um, I got a tattoo um, in between two of my scars wow. and it's a sunflower um, and it's actually a sunflower with uh, with a dot pattern of like the Fibonacci sequence in the middle of it and for me it's it's meant to represent a new start and a new beginning. Mm -hmm. um, because there have been so many times when I've looked at myself and I thought, well, this is just like, this is just me trying to do the best I can with what I have. But in reality, it's a new opportunity to try new things. Yeah. Um, it becomes this, it becomes this brand new beginning for me. And uh, from here on out, like, I get to define who I am and what it is I want to be. And um, in so many, in so many different ways, just because like, first of all, when I got the tattoo, um, I felt it for the first time. Like, it, was, it was the first time I got any feeling back because it was no just. Well, do you have any tattoos? No, I don't. Okay, well, the tattoo needle. Try the needle. The tattoo needle, it's a lot. Um, <laughs> it, it's not really, like, it's nothing I can't handle, but um, it was able to, like, wake up my nerves enough for me to feel it. Wow. And so it was the first time I was able to, like, feel something in my new body. And then just every time I look at it, it's like, this isn't. It's in between two giant scars I have. And so this is something that I put here. This is a beautiful work of art that I put here myself. I put time into designing it. I put money into it. And I was and I I'm able to define what that is and what that means for me. Yes. And that's what every tattoo means, but this is the first one I've gotten since any of the procedures have happened. Yeah. And it makes me feel like me. And when I look at it every time I feel like insecure in the mirror before I look at the scars. Yeah, it's owning that body, it's yeah. decorating that body, it's yeah. celebrating it and enjoying it, making it your piece of art. Yeah. I absolutely love that and um, we touched on something earlier as well which I love where you said that anyone wants to be in the body positive community, anyone that feels like 
oh, maybe I'm not right, or maybe my body isn't celebrated in the body positive community. And then you said you kind of kind of fell into the body positive community with my the accident, video going yeah. viral, but like, to speak to anyone out there who wants to be part of the movement, you, you got any advice for them? Um, and you know, we did, we did touch on this in, yeah. the, uh, in the panel, but um, there have been so many times when I wanted to talk about uh, my body before any of this happened. I, I became aware of the body positive community way before um, I went viral. I knew I, I was following blogs and, and Instagram pages all about it, but I never thought that I was able to fit in there because um, I'm a man. I'm uh, non-white. Like I, I, I'm basically just like a, just like a human like census. I'm just I'm non-white. I'm queer. I'm I'm poor. Like it, it just it comes from all these different. Places and I thought that because of that I didn't belong here. Yeah. But if you don't see a place for you and people like you, then it is your responsibility to carve out that place if you believe you have the tools to do so. And I wish I'd known that ages ago because I think yeah. I could have. Um, I think that there are so many times when we want to speak and we want to be seen, but we don't think that there is a space for people like us. And that's the exact reason why you have to speak out. Exactly. Because if you don't, if you don't carve out that space, it's not just going to open up and wait for you to come fill it. And you like, are that space. Yeah. So you, so you have to be that. And, and the truth is, like, you know, they they always say like, oh, it only starts with one person. But the truth is, that's how it happens. The thing that I, the, like, one of the biggest things I've learned from like going viral is that it could happen to literally anyone. And yep. what matters is what you do with it. I was incredibly lucky with what happened. Like, it, it was just circumstance, um, and. It, that being said, I have worked ever since then to try and do the best I could with that. Exactly. And I think that like anyone who wants to put effort in, anyone who wants to be heard because they want people who are like them to see that they don't need to be alone, mm -hmm. like that is one of the most powerful things you can do. And all you need to do is just exist and demand to be seen and tell people like this is who I am and mm -hmm. I refuse to be afraid or scared because of that. Every single voice is unique and yeah. different, so every single person has a has a place. Yeah. They have that space, and that's why even when I look and I kind of see, you might think it's saturated, like in the body positive community, and it does seem like a lot of people maybe look the same. And it's yeah. like, speak out. You're out there, whoever you are. Like you know, you have your place, and we we want your voice and we need it. And I'm just so grateful that Matt's been here. We've done this video. Um, he's going to be online so much more, I just know it, he has an important message to share. <laughs> well, so, something that I, I wanted to say to you, especially like yeah. because we've had a, the chance to like interact a bit now, yeah. um, is the fact that you know, you, you'll see people who traditionally fit into like our standards and you'll see people who don't. And um, we're, you and I are very different people and I think that's why we like juxtapose, we work so well together. But I, I also want to say like it's so important for um, for people who do have that like people who do fit within those standards to not feel invalidated because of that. Um, the truth is, like, body image issues are unique to everyone, and everyone has experienced them. And just because you're someone, like, if you are that traditional, like, thin physique that tends to be celebrated in the media, it doesn't mean that you don't get to feel insecure. It doesn't mean that you don't get to feel afraid. It doesn't mean that your story isn't valid. And, that, and, and even that being said, like, being able to use your platform to, to spread that um, regardless of what people might think, like it's so important, yeah. and I'm I feel really fortunate and really lucky that like you you wanted to talk about this because the truth is like you need to be able to open like when when you have that ability and you have that attention, using that to try and like open doors for others for 100%. other people's stories to be heard is so important because eventually once however many people know your story, it's like, all right, cool, what can I do exactly. for others? And I just really, I, I, that's something I really appreciate about you and like the work you do here. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that means a lot <laughs> to me that, you know, I hope, I hope that's what people realize I'm trying to do. Right. Because um, that means everything to me. And it, it, that is, like I said, like I said in the thing, I don't, don't care if I'm not on the cover of the magazine. Yeah. I just want to see the magazine and be online and see diversity and inclusion and all yeah. those things celebrated. It's, 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 so, it's so important and it's so, um, once, once, and this is something I've talked about too, once those things stop 
sticking out. Yes, being like, oh my gosh, look. Yeah, once it becomes boring. Yeah, yeah, once it becomes boring to see, it's like, all right, cool, we've gotten there because now it's normalized. And that's, that's, that's the biggest thing, especially in terms of National Eating Disorder Awareness Week, especially in terms of um, your own body image, we need to normalize it, which means we need to have open conversation about it. We need to be able to talk about it because the second you do, it stops being intimidating. The moment that you open up and you actually verbalize a fear you have, it stops being this abstract thing and starts being something you can actually approach and tackle and eventually conquer. Love that. We are ending on that because that was just <laughs> amazing. Thank you it. so much. No, and thank absolutely. you all for watching. Um, I'm going to put all in the description um, where you can follow Matt, where you can find him online, um, all the need to help lines as well. So thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Bye.